All right, I've had several requests to do uh, an example on cantilevered beams, so here you go. I've set up a problem where we've got a cantilevered beam two meters long, and we have a weight hanging in the, in the end of it, say a person, say, I don't know, a middle-aged college professor, and the weight is 930 newtons because the professor eats at McDonald's too often. Um, the width of the cross section is 100 millimeters, or around four inches, and the depth is 75 millimeters, about three inches. Now I assume the beam is made out of a uh, hardwood. I looked up the number for rock maple, which is a particularly hard kind of wood, and the elastic modulus is high for wood anyway. The elastic modulus is 10 gigapascals. And what I want to do here is I want us to find the deflection at the end of the beam. And we're going to do this using integration. First thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find the uh, area moment of inertia of the beam. Now remember there's two things that tell you how stiff a beam is, how resistant it is to deflection. The first thing is its material, and more specifically the elastic modulus. So if the elastic modulus of this wood is 10 gigapascals and the uh, elastic modulus of steel is 200 gigapascals, all other things being equal, the steel beam would be 20 times as stiff because 20 times 10 is 200. The other thing that tells you how stiff a beam is or how resistant it is to deflection is the area moment of inertia. Now that's a stiffness term that tells you stiffness is a function of cross-sectional shape. Um, if you go through the calculations you'll see that a beam that's very deep, as is very tall, is much, much stiffer than a beam that's uh, the same beam laid on its side that's wide. So area moment of inertia tells you stiffness due to geometry, and elastic modulus, E, tells you stiffness that's a function of material. So let's figure out I, the stiffness due to geometry. So write out the solution here. And so step one, we're going to find I. Now, I for a rectangle like this is a very simple expression. And that's 1 over 12 times the base times the height cubed. So that's 1 over 12 times, so I'm going to do this all in meters. So 0 0.1 meters times 0 0.075 meters cubed. And I've got my little cheat sheet down here to make sure I do everything right. And I is going to turn out to be Let's see, 3.5156 times 10 to the 6th. And now we've got length times length cubed. So the uh, units on I are going to be length to the 4th. So that's going to be meters to the 4th. Now a couple of things here. I'm going to work this and most of my other problems to five significant digits. That's enough to uh, be manageable and not have too much round off error. And the other one is always, always, always carry your units through. I know it seems a little bit cumbersome to do that, to carry these units through. But when you carry the units through and you check your units, when the units are right at the end, the numbers will pretty much come along for the ride. The numbers are likely to be correct as well. If the units are wrong, the numbers are definitely wrong. So when you decide not to carry your units through, you're giving up a very powerful tool that lets you check your answers. So we've got that. I'm going to write I up here because we're going to need this space in a second. 3.5156 times 10 to the minus 6 meters to the 4th. Now that's a really small number, and the reason that's a really small number is we're multiplying by meters to the 4th, and a meter's big distance, meters this long. So that's, that's probably correct. That we don't need to worry about that. Found I. Now, the next thing we're going to need to do is draw the load shear moment diagram. Okay, and that's a pictorial representation of the shear and the moment along the beam. So let's do that real quick. We're going to have to uh, make fit this into the space here. Now, we're going to need to draw a, in order to draw the load shear moment diagram, we're going to have to draw a uh, free body diagram of the beam. So, let's just draw that out here real quick. 
FBD for free body diagram. I've got the weight here, it's 930 newtons, and obviously there has to be a 930 newton reaction force on the other end. Now, two forces separated by a distance form a couple that creates a moment, and so the moment's going to have to go this way. The resisting moment is going to have to be that, and that moment is going to be 930 newtons times the two meters on the beam. So that's 1860 newton meters. Right, we're going to need to know that. So let's draw the load right here. And we've got uh, basically a reaction force there, 930 newtons, and the weight over here, which is also 930 newtons. Okay, now to draw the shear portion of the diagram, we work from left to right. So I'm going to start over here, add that shear, carry it over, and then add that one. So step out of the frame here, go up to 930 over and back down to zero again. If I do this right, I should go back down to zero again. If I don't, something's wrong. So there we go. There's that shears and newtons. Maybe I should get on the other side here. So it's 930 newtons. The last thing we need to do is draw the moment. So I'll put that on here. Now, I've got a problem. I generally use that coordinate system, and I'd like to here as well, but when you're dealing with beams that have moments like that, like our reaction moment, there are two coordinate systems being used in the same problem. We generally use what's called the designer sign convention. And the designer sign convention is this. Let me write it, I don't know, right here. If a beam curves this way, uh, middle up and ends down, we call that a negative curvature in the designer sign convention, independent of what this coordinate system says. Okay. If the beam is concave up rather than concave down, we call that a positive moment or positive curvature. So there needs to be some convenient way to memorize this. Now I'm going to write down the stupidest thing I've ever written down on the board. That, let me do this, my pen just went dry. Right there. That's positive. Here. That's negative. Now, that's a silly way to remember it. Believe me, you're going to remember it. All right, so there you go. So let's finish our load shear moment diagram now. Draw this in. Okay, so I'm going to go now to a negative moment here due to designer sign convention. And that's what this looks like. So that's 1860 newton meters there, negative. And the equation for that line, which we'll need, is 930x minus 1860. All right, I'm out of time here on this video. This is part one. I'll go to part two here in a moment.